I am Tamara and today we are going to be making these adorable flower table toppers. They are easy to make and we are going to be making our own template using a simple protractor. If you don't have a protractor at home, that is okay. Just Google protractor and you'll be able to print one out and that's all you need to be able to make your template. One more thing before we jump into the tutorial, I do want to point out a difference between these two table toppers. So as you can see here, I've made two. This one is the good one, this one the not so good one. When we get to a particular step, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail to show you how you can end up with a table topper that looks like this. Versus this, I think they both look pretty good, but this one, I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of bunched up in the center and all of these leaves are different sizes. Whereas this one, it will lay nice and flat and all of your petals, not leaves, will match up in the center and they won't bubble up. So keep your eye out for those steps. Now let's get sewing. Start by choosing two different complementary but contrasting fabrics. Then cut out an eight inch circle. The way that I made my eight inch circle was by grabbing a piece of cardstock, marking four inches from point to point, putting a hole in both points, pinning it to my secondary piece of cardboard or cardstock, and then just drawing a circular line around the entire thing. That's what gave me my eight inch circle. You will need to cut out seven circles from each contrasting fabric. The way that I did this was I laid my eight inch circle template on top of the fabric and I traced the eight inch circle around. Then I cut around my fabric, leaving about a half inch amount of space between the traced circle and where I was cutting. This can be done in a very sloppy fashion. You don't have to be too concerned about this being a neat and tidy outer circle. Once you have seven circles cut from each fabric. Grab the lighter fabric circles and then use your eight inch circle to trace a circular line within the center of all of those seven circles. Do this on the wrong side of the fabric. Next you will take one of your circles from the darker fabric and one circle from the lighter fabric. Lay them right sides together. Mark about a two inch space where you will not sew and then you will sew around the eight inch circle line that you marked on your fabric. You will do this starting with a backstitch and stopping with a backstitch. Of course, do this for all seven circles. Now it's time to trim away the excess fabric around the outer edge. So I would suggest leaving between an eighth to a quarter of an inch space from your seam allowance to the outer edge, but where you left that two inch opening, just leave the entire section, snipping within it maybe two snips so that it is a little bit more flexible when it's time to turn it right side out. Then reach on into your circle and pull it right side out. Then use something pointy but not too pointy to push out those inner edges. So for myself I love using this plastic chopstick and I just run it along the entire inner edge before I'll bring it to my iron and then press it flat. The way that I like to press my circles is by starting away from the opening and I slowly press my edges moving towards that final opening, pressing that into a nice circular curve as well. Then you'll take it back to your sewing machine and you will sew a quarter inch seam around the entire top edge, sealing in that open section. Now it's time to create our second template. You want this template to be done on a flimsier piece of paper because you will need to fold it. So trace your eight inch circle onto a regular piece of paper, cut that circle out, and then fold your circle in half. Now you will need a ruler that operates as a protractor, or you could grab yourself a protractor or even print one off online. You'll need this protractor to be able to lay it along that side edge, matching up with the bottom of the circle. Mark a 25 degree angle, then mark a line from that bottom point past the 25 degree mark that you made all the way up to the outer edge. Then trim the excess curve away. Then take all seven 
seven circles and fold them in half with your lighter fabric on the outer side and press a crease along all of the halves. I did pay attention to where my two inch opening had been sealed up and I tried to put that at the bottom of my circle because it's kind of the ugliest part and the ugliest part I find is nicely hidden in and amongst the folds that way. Then mark a line along the top edge and the bottom edge of that ironed in crease. Next you will lay your template on top of your circle lining the upper curve along the top of your circle. So you may end up with a tiny bit of the point coming over the bottom of your circle. This is actually a good thing because what you want to do is when you are tracing your line along that template is to not end up with your point right at that inner edge, but you actually want it to be about a quarter of an inch out from that inner edge. So your template should allow for that, but I highly recommend that you make sure that each traced template line will end up about that quarter inch away from that bottom edge. Do this for all of your circles, only on the one side of each half. So I've used my template and traced my mark along all of my circles. And now I just wanna show you here on one of these circles that when I open it up, I have about a quarter of an inch from that center fold to my template line, which gives me about a half inch from seam to seam when you start sewing your circle. This space is very important to keep when you start sewing all of your circles together. Otherwise you'll end up with a center like you see here and all of these little leaves are kind of pulling up towards the center. You really don't want that. You want your flower petals to lay flat when all is said and done. Then grab two circles and lay them lining up both the top and bottom markings that you created along that fold line. Pin that in place and then you will sew along your 25 degree angle that you drew following your template. And of course you will start with a back stitch and you will stop with a back stitch. And this is what it will look like when your two circles are sewn together. And what you will do is you will grab your next circle and you will do the exact same thing. So you will match up those two center markings that you made along that creased line that you created earlier. You will pin that in place and then you will sew along your 25 degree marked line. Now once I have three circles sewn together, I'm just going to open it up here so you can see how there's that little bit of space. It's a about a half inch amount of space in between those two seams. That is the very important step that you need to keep in mind when you are sewing all of your circles together. I promise that this will help your petals lay flat at the very end of this project. And now you will add all of the circles the exact same way you added the first two and you will just work your way all the way around. Once you've attached all of your circles together you will have one final seam to be sewn that way all of your circles will lay nicely together. And this is what it will look like at this stage of the process. You can see it's kind of pulling in the center, but don't be too concerned. It's really only pulling because of all of these large flaps along the top. So what you'll do is you will now take this to your iron and you will just press all of those flaps. This will allow the entire table topper to lay nice and flat. And now if you wanted, you could leave it here and it would make a beautiful table topper. But I am going to continue by lining up each of my petals along their outer edge, pin them, and then just finger press a crease along one edge. Once I've finger pressed that crease in place, then I just take my marking pen and I draw a line along that crease. Take it to your sewing machine and sew along that crease. Do this for all of your petals. This is what it'll look like once you've sewn all of those petals together. Take it to your iron and give that a nice final press. And this is what your flower table topper will look like when it is finished. Since you are still here, I want to show you this table topper here that you can make next. I will have the tutorial for this one linked in the description down below. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.